What's up you guys and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So it happens pretty often that I'm getting those comments from you guys saying that well it's all good Natalia but Copics are hella expensive and I just can't afford them. Or that you wish you did a certain drawing using some certain technique but those art supplies that you need for it are just way too expensive. And you guys believe me I truly understand this struggle and that's why today I decided to come up with a good solution because today I'm gonna do a drawing comparison between those super expensive art supplies and I'm gonna compare them to their cheaper alternatives, those kind of dupes that in my opinion are sometimes as good as those original ones. So I really hope that you're gonna find this video helpful because not only I've been gathering those dupes for a while now so I'm quite certain of their good quality but also they will help you out to save some money on your art supplies and this is what everyone wants, am I right? So this is what we're gonna be doing today and also today's video is brought to you by Squarespace, a great online platform where you can set up your own domain, your own website or even an online store you can make it all with Squarespace. All right, so now let's get started. All right, so here's the sketch that I prepared for today's video. And on the left side, I'll be coloring it in with uh, more affordable options. And on the right side, I'll be using the more expensive art supplies to color it in with. But first of all, I need to swatch all the supplies that I'm going to use for both sides of my drawing. The ones on the left are going to be the cheaper options. And the ones on the right are going to be the expensive alternatives. Firstly, the markers. I wanted to go for a rather light skin tone and I knew that it would be a rather challenging task to find a good fair skin color in cheaper markers. I don't know why, but I find it quite troublesome to come across nice light complexion colors in affordable markers. But anyway, I managed to pick three very nice shades from Art & Fly markers, but unfortunately here I'll be using pointed markers because I didn't find those shades uh, in brush marker versions in my collection, but I do think that they should have uh, exact same shades in the brush uh, tip options on their website. And as for the expensive side, I will be obviously using Copic markers. I managed to pick very similar colors to the Art & Fly markers, just look at the top row, these are almost the exact same shades. And once I was set with the complexion colors, I moved on to the hair colors. And my idea was to make the hair pink, which in fact caused me quite some trouble to find a good not too bright and not too neon pink shade that will fit the hair color that I had in my mind. And here again for the cheaper side I'll use the Art & Fly marker and for the expensive side I'll be using Copic marker. In this comparison I need to admit that I prefer the color of the dupe marker but I need to say that I don't own a full range of Copic markers so well I bet that they have some better shades of pink to match the Art & Fly marker but well I just didn't own any. And for the roots and shadows in the hair I picked two dark greys, both Art & Fly and as their more expensive alternative I went for a brush marker because I just didn't have this color from Copic markers. And lastly the color pencils and the corresponding colors to the previously picked shades of markers. For the cheaper side I'll be using the Arteza colored pencils and I was really happy because I found really beautiful light skin tones in their set and for the expensive side I'll go with Prismacolor Premier pencils and here I also found some pretty accurate color matches. So once I have the color scheme set I started off with outlining my sketch like I always do. And for the dupe side I'll be using the Art & Fly Fineliner which is actually one of my favorites. And also recently they came out with the 0.03mm ones which they told me they did after my advice which I'm just so so glad for because you know how much I love really thin fineliners. But anyway, these work just perfectly for me and they are very pigmented and intensely black and they just glide on the paper very very well so there's really nothing bad to say about them. And as for the expensive side, I went for a Copic Multiliner in the exact same thickness. And honestly, I used to really like them, but now I'm not that convinced anymore. They are in fact very good fine liners, and I really like their design, but sometimes they tend to be a little bit skippy, especially when you apply them over a couple of layers of color pencils, for example. So well, even though both of these fineliners are doing the job very well, nowadays I tend to gravitate towards the Art & Fly liners more. After I was done with outlining, I erased the pencil lines and went ahead with coloring. First the cheaper side, and here comes a great surprise because even though these markers didn't have a brush tip, they blended very very well. 
I honestly wasn't expecting that at all, even though I was using those markers previously, but I just didn't remember about the fact that they blended just this well. And here I need to say that I'm not a fan of blending skin on my drawings without having a brush tip on my markers, but here, like you can see, I really didn't have any problems. And well, also the colors blended effortlessly into each other, so once more I didn't have any problems in doing the blending with these markers and layering them onto each other. And for the expensive side, of course, Copics. And here I don't know if I should even start rambling about how amazing Copics are, because I think that at this point everyone is kind of aware of that. They really can't compare with any markers when it comes to how good they blend into each other and how enjoyable they make the process of coloring. So in this part I might give it to Copics because honestly they are just the best alcohol markers out there, you won't find anything better, honestly. So well, sadly I need to say that this competition the Copics are winning, you can see it for yourself on the video, the blending is still a little bit better than on the Art and Fly side, even though I'm super happy with how the blending is on the cheaper side of my drawing. But like I said, Copics are always ahead of every dupe marker out there, so well, you guys see it for yourself. If you want a more affordable options, I would go for Art and Fly markers, but if you still want something, you know, just the best out here, then go for Copics. And well, after skin coloring comes skin shading. And here is going to be a battle between Arteza colored pencils and the famous Prismacolor Premier pencils. I've been using Arteza pencils for a long while now and I can't express how much I love them. In this video where I was testing Arteza products, I noticed right away that they feel like a hybrid between my favorite Faber-Castell Polychromos ones and those Prismacolor Premier ones. And well, even now, after a while, I still stick to this statement because every time I'm using those Art and Fly pencils, I'm just having this what I said in my mind, they just feel so like in between Polychromos and uh, Prismacolor Premier. They feel quite firm, but yet they are still buttery-like, so you can do an effortless blending with them. And also adding to that, they just glide so smoothly on the paper and you can layer them without any problems. And also their price is in fact insanely low for how good they are. And then on the right side of my drawing I use the Prismacolor Premier pencils and they are of course amazing to work with, they blend also effortlessly, but in this comparison they are a bit more battery-like and a little bit more waxy in my opinion in comparison to the Arteza ones. But here it comes to the point that you actually need to decide for yourself which pencils are going to be better for you because this comes to the personal preference. If you feel like you want something more waxy and more buttery-like, then I would go for Prismacolor Premier. But if you want something on the more firm side of the color pencils, then those Arteza ones are really really good. But but well, for this drawing comparison that I'm doing right now, you can see it for yourself. There's really not much difference in between those both sides and those color pencils. So I think here the choice is rather up to you and rather up to your personal preference. After I was done with shading with color pencils, I moved on to adding little details on the face, like coloring in the eyebrows, pupils, lips, and so on. And here also for the cheap side I used Art and Fly markers and for the expensive side the Copics and Pro markers. And here it's not really much of a difference because those elements were just too small to judge. Then for the hair I also used Art and Fly markers for the cheaper side and Copics for the expensive side and well I didn't see much of a difference between them while coloring in the hairstyle. But also here it's worth to notice that hairstyle doesn't really need super effortless and super accurate blending. Uh, hair are rather more loose strokes of the markers, of course some blending is needed, but uh, hair is more forgiving than, for example, face coloring. So here I would say the cheaper markers are just good enough to color it in. And after I did the coloring with the markers, I finished this hairstyle up with uh, adding some colored pencils and uh, like previously I'm using the Arteza ones for the left side and the Prismacolor Premier for the right side. 
After I was done with the hairstyle, I moved on to coloring her top and here I picked light lavender color and for the cheap side I used a hoo-hoo marker and for the expensive side a Copic marker. Unfortunately, I didn't have a good color match here, so the shades are quite different. I finished her top with color pencils and I added some texture to it so it looks like it's a real fabric. And now I want to speak a little bit more about the art sponsor of my today's video. I've recently been thinking a lot about setting up my own website and online store and I was quite frustrated that I couldn't find a good platform to create my website with. But well, then I came across Squarespace and I totally fell in love with it. I'm not any web designer and I don't have any experience in that field, so I really treasure an easy way to design my website and this is what Squarespace provides me with. Also, they have so many different templates that I could choose the one that will present my artworks in the best possible way. And once you pick your template, the designing process is really easy. You can customize every little detail of your page, starting off from the custom domain, the headlines and the banners, and what's even more awesome is that you can upload your YouTube videos to be displayed on your web page. That's such an amazing feature for me. So if you want to make your own website or an online store, you might want to check Squarespace out. And head over to squarespace.com slash nataliamade and sign up for a free trial when you can also get a 10% off your first purchase. So if you're interested in that, then check my description box for all the further details. And as for the last elements, I finished my drawing off with some white highlights. For the cheap side, I used my Art & Fly white gel pens, which are in fact one of the best white gel pens out there. And they are definitely not skippy, they are pigmented, they are opaque, so I highly recommend them to you guys. And well, for the expensive side, I went with Copic Opaque White, which in my opinion is a bit overpriced and really hard to work with. But on the other hand, it's really opaque and it's actually a little bit more opaque than the Arden Fly one so well here the choice is quite difficult but I would still go with the um, Arden Fly pens because they are just easier to use in my opinion. And here you can finally see the full and finished side-by-side -side drawing comparison between the cheaper dupes and the expensive original art supplies. And what do you guys think? In my opinion, there's really not much of a difference. The comfort of the work while doing this drawing was almost the same. I didn't notice any difficulties throughout the process. So, well, this proves one thing that in fact, some of those really expensive art supplies might not be worth the price and overpaying. I mean, they still gonna be the most professional art supplies, but I honestly do think that sometimes those cheaper options might be just as good. And well, if you're interested in knowing all the numbers of the products that I use today, all the colors, then make sure you check my description box out, everything is gonna be listed there. Alright you guys, and that will be all for my today's video comparison between the expensive art supplies and those cheaper alternatives. And I really truly hope that you found this video helpful because, you know, I always want you guys to save some coins and not, you know, spend all your money on art supplies. Sometimes it's really not that necessary when you have good dupes to, you know, buy instead of those super expensive art supplies. So I really hope that you got some good advice from me today and I just want to say thank you guys so so much for watching. Don't forget about leaving a comment for me, leaving a like if you enjoyed this video and also you can subscribe to my channel if you want to stay up to date with my new content coming soon. And well, once more, thank you so so much for spending your time with me. I hope you're having an amazing day and I can't wait to see you in my next videos. Bye guys! I'm just going with the gut, never had a doubt, felt like this is just a must Put me in perspective, I'm the deepest in the cut, everybody tuning in, but this is just for us now